Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships. I'm going to just put in a plug for myself. If you haven't been listening to my new podcast, Navigating Narcissism, please tune in. The info is in the video notes. Okay, so today's video takes on gaslighting. And very specifically, something that recently came up and something I was witnessing, which is how narcissistic people almost set up a gaslight situation so you walk right into it. So how do they set that gaslighted trap? Let's talk about that. So gaslighting is usually reactive, right? So as an example, give you a silly example. You may, you ask them, hey, why did you move the keys? They say, I didn't move the keys. You know they moved the keys. You even heard them move the keys. You say, I heard you move the keys. And dude, it's even on the camera. And then they tell you, hey, you know what the problem is? I didn't move the keys, but you're paranoid and you want us all to live in a surveillance state. Or you say, hey, my friend saw you at the XYZ bar last night having a drink with that woman from the gym. They say, there's no way your friend saw it because it never happened. But I will say that I do not appreciate you asking your friends to spy on me because you have all these messed up trust issues from your weird mother. Okay, classic gaslighting example. So gaslighting again tends to be in response to something you say, and it's a way to doubt reality, paint you as impaired, leave you questioning yourself and slowly silencing you. But I think that there's, I, I know that there's a gaslighting maneuver that a lot of people are not aware of. They actually set you up. They get you right where they need you to gaslight you. So for example, a gaslighter may start a conversation with something like, okay, so this may be a difficult conversation since women do tend to be so emotional and angry, and you in particular are really emotional and angry, and you are not able to handle feedback. Or they might start with, you know, this is going to be interesting to talk about because people from your ethnic group can be a bit feisty. So this sort of biased pre-gaslight usually involves a biased statement, and the bias is about whatever group you are a part of gender, ethnicity, age, sexual orientation, whatever it may be. The normal desires to say, hey, 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 whoa, 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 what the hell? You are assuming all women are angry and emotional? What are you from the dark ages? Who says that? Like, what the actual? And you may be appropriately angry or showing emotion or being, as they quote unquote put it, feisty. Then they sort of sit back with a look of derision and contempt and, and sort of that I told you so face on them and say, see, told you so, you are emotional. So they literally set the gaslight up like a trap, like a snare. And many people will walk into it. Now, in most cases, this kind of gaslight setup will not fly in the workplace though it once did, you likely have a case, especially if it was in writing or someone else witnessed it or it was recorded, probably not much will happen in the workplace if you don't have that evidence. However, this gaslight setup, when it happens in family relationships or intimate relationships, forget it. There is no human resource department in a family or a relationship. That whole setup feels terrible because it feels like a gotcha. They set you up, right? You have the appropriate reaction to someone sort of writing you off in a biased way. And then that plays into their stereotype. And at that point, anything you try to say to make your point will be treated as more of your emotionality or whatever it is that they are accusing you of, bolstering their already twisted kind of argument. And when I have worked with clients who have endured this, after the original reaction they have, anger, emotion, whatever it may be, they may, may then later on say, oh, I feel like I overreacted. So not only were you set up in a bias, bait, gaslight gambit, but then you fall into a self-gaslight. So it's a lot of feeling upside down and confused. Whatever your typical reaction is, they will set the gaslight up that way. 
because not everyone will have a strong emotional reaction because of past histories of how they respond to these kinds of interpersonally abusive or even sort of narcissistically abusive situations. Some people, for example, may freeze. So it may simply be that once the gaslighter learns this about you, that you don't actually react in that way, they may take another approach. So then they might hit you with like, oh, people from your ethnic group do tend to clam up and don't really show any emotions or women are meek. They just don't know how to fight or, you know, guys just don't have emotional worlds that they can express. So if your tendency when someone hits you with this biased BS is to shut down, once again, they shrug and say, see, and they may even level up with more cruelty, saying more and more awful things to get you to respond. And when you don't, they may say, oh, see, told you. you, you never show your emotions. Nothing gets you going. After that, you may self gaslight yourself and say, ay, ay, ay. There must be something wrong with me. I can't even think of the right thing to say when I'm being attacked. I am so weak and meek and passive. In essence, mirroring what they set you up in, that kind of thing. Boom. Gaslight. So what the hell are you supposed to do in these circumstances? You already know the answer to this. Don't engage. Recognize the game that they are playing and do not give them the satisfaction. It's baiting, obviously, but it's a unique spot where the baiting meets gaslighting. They are trying to lure you in. This only works if you take the bait. But you may be thinking, well, their bait is people like you always just walk away. I guess you're just passive aggressive. So you may feel like you can't win because they've already set it up around your response and pathologized your response you can give a sort of basic answer. Calmly say, I guess we believe what we believe. I don't agree. And let's just leave it at that. They will still contemptuously poke at you. But at some point, they look foolish and no different than an insecure schoolyard bully. The key is that you understand their game and not fall into the self-gaslighting that maintains and keeps you in this toxic cycle. The challenge is for you, you know who you are and recognize that they are just airing not only their biases, but their need to dominate. If you don't respond, even if they pathologize, you're not responding. Recognize that your non-response, your non-engagement is the ultimate rejection. And that is actually the best way to stick it back to someone with this kind of personality pattern. Gaslighting works because we have internalized the biases of the world. The existing biases that make stereotyped assumptions about gender or ethnicity or nationality or political views, we live in a world that holds those. So it's easy to internalize them and wonder if in fact we do have a problem. Engaging with a baiter or gaslighter is pointless. It's like trying to turn a scorpion into a pet. And like the old yarn goes about pigs and mud, as, as the old yarn goes about pigs and mud, you get dirty and the pig likes it. So come up with a calm response and then to the best you can, let it go. Nothing shuts a gaslighter down faster than a well-regulated person who won't engage. But be aware of this dynamic, and when you see it coming, you can smile to yourself and see their game so you don't gaslight yourself. Hope that little trick helps, and thanks again.